is Mike McNeil from Dividend Stock Rock. I hope you're doing well. Uh, thank you for being here today. I know that we had a false start uh, yesterday, so hopefully that today the sounds were, is going to go well. Uh, we did some extensive tests uh, yesterday night, and everything was uh, good. Actually, I was quite happy to use a new camera yesterday, but it sounds that it's probably what caused the uh, the problem. So as you can see, there's a lot of people that are using the chat box on the left right now to say hi. Hi, Hank from Sweden. Hi, Ron. Uh, just to make sure, do you see me all right? Do you hear me well? Uh, this is the crucial moment in this webinar. Uh, I'm Erol. So we have Veronique, core business manager at Dividend Stocks Rock, working with us. Uh, she will be there to support us if we have any technical difficulties. Um, so while we are uh, while I'm doing the presentation, do just use the, the chat box if you have any comments or question about what I'm saying. And during the rest of the uh, for the all the other questions, you just use the questions uh, section at the bottom of your screen. So if you have any uh, question about a specific stock or a strategy, or you want to talk about uh, I don't know currencies or whatever. Uh, I will stick around at the end of the presentation for a good 20-25 uh, minutes to do a Q&A. So I will be following up those questions at that time. Um, all right, so we are going to start. As I as I saw, there's a lot of people that I that have um, answered the polls already. Uh, half of you are fully invested. The other half is waiting for. Uh, <clears throat> A market correction. Uh, on my side, I have about two percent in cash, ninety-eight percent invested in, in equities. So we're going to uh, to look at that today. I'm pull out my screen over there. All right. So why are you here today? We're going to discuss uh, three things that matters about portfolio management. Uh, this is in line with the buy and sell struggle actually uh, and then we are going to see four different steps uh, that will uh, put you in the right mindset. Uh, Sean, you should be able to hear me. <laughs> Do we have any problems, uh, Vero? Or Okay, cool. Perfect. Excellent. So, um, so yeah, sorry, moment of panic here. Uh, so four steps that I've used personally um, to invest my pension plan back in, uh, in September 2017 to invest my, my pension plan to avoid being paralyzed by analysis. So my goal here today during this webinar is to give you tricks uh, to avoid that and to start and, and to make you start investing. And also we have the other struggle, which is the sell struggle, which is pretty much the same thing. We always wonder if it's a good time to buy or a good time to sell. Uh, I had a few clients from uh, Dividend Stocks Rock yesterday. They were uh, sending me emails about uh, Enbridge that has fell about five or 6% yesterday and they couldn't find why. There were uh, absolutely no news around Enbridge, nothing new that we, uh, we were supposed to know about, but there was a major sell off in that industry at that time yesterday most companies uh in the pipeline business were having a hard time so that was just the reason why and when such when such things happen most investors are are questioning well should i sell now to avoid a major loss is it time to just quit the boat and then start to and go cash because the correction is coming or is it just market new noise and most of the time it is market noise um, you are also here to ask your questions. As I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, if you're joining late, use the, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the question uh, section at the bottom to ask any question about any companies. Uh, this one it has a Canadian twist on it, so I will be talking about Canadian stocks, but for American investors, if you are interested in asking about uh, US stocks, I'll, you'll be more than welcome to do it at the end of the webinar. Um, Finally, you're not here to get buy or sell recommendation. I am not your broker nor your financial advisor. Everything that uh, is being produced under Mike McNeil or Dividend Stocks Rocks is for informational and entertainment purposes only. Uh, therefore, you cannot sue us uh, if you're losing money on the stock market after viewing one of our webinars or reading one of our newsletters. But on the good side of things, you don't have to pay us a dime on your profit either. 
So for those, for those who don't know me, my name is Mike McNeil. If you're wondering what, what is that accent, uh, it's because I'm from Canada and I'm French Canadian. So English is my second language. Uh, I've worked in the, um, the financial industry for uh, 13 years, so from 2003 to 2016. I worked as a private banker for the last five years, uh, doing uh, basically uh, portfolio management, uh, retirement planning, and estate planning for uh, iNetwork client. I decided to take uh, iCrystal. Where, where are you coming from, Canada? I'm from Quebec, obviously. Calgary, <clears throat> nice. So, uh, <clears throat> sorry about that. So yeah, in 2016, I decided to take a sabbatical year uh, going uh, <clears throat> on an RV trip with my family that you can see on the first picture. Uh, you have uh, Amy, Caleb, and my, and my oldest son, William. And on the middle one, which was uh, taken uh, not too far from Calgary at Lac Maureen in the Rockies, you have my wife, Jose, as well. Um, the last picture is quite special for me. It's a picture of uh, Lake Atitlan in Guatemala. Uh, I'm going back there next week with my wife for uh, just for a week, but going to uh, recharge our batteries over there. And uh, this is one of the reasons why I decided to quit my job uh, last year when I came back from my trip is because I realized that I really enjoy educating people and helping them making sound investment decision. But the problem with my uh, private banker job was that I was only able to reach about 300 to 250 clients. Now that I've quit that and I'm doing this work online, I can reach thousands of people, L them out, and one of my patients is, is obviously uh, the stock market and I can share it with the maximum of people. So as I just mentioned, uh, last year I quit my job. I had uh, the option of receiving my pension plan and start managing it for myself. So I received in September 2017 the sum of $108,000 Canadian money. Uh, unfortunately, I wish it was US back then, but uh, what do you want to do? Um, so back then, look at the market. Uh, you see the blue line is the uh, S&P 500. The orange line is the TSX. Uh, most of them are pointing towards a very clear direction. It's been uh, a quite a bull market. We had our fair shares of problems on the, uh, the TSX, but for the U.S. market, that's been almost a non-stopping bull market for the past nine years. Um, back then, if I would have given you $100,000 on September 2017, would you have invested that money? Tell me on the, uh, use the chat box, tell me if you, have, you would have invested the full amount right away. Yes. Good, I'm proud of you guys. 10%, okay. So we can see that there's a lot of people that were uh, quite uh, optimist about the market, that's good. Um, actually, this is exactly what I did. And what I would like to show you now is even though you're investing uh, during a hot time high, even though that we all know that September and October are not known uh, historically to have necessarily good um, the good returns, we all have the uh, the fall of 2008 in uh, in mind. There's also there was also the Black Monday as well that happened in October uh, '87. But what you can see after that is that it was really worth it. Oh, I'm just going to change the layout over here. There you go. So you can have the full screen over there. Um, so yeah, so from September, the discharge is from September till uh, mid-February. Just to show you that just as the market was about to rebound from that mini correction, both markets were up. So the U.S. market was up about 9%. The Canadian market was still up 1%. Back then, I looked at my own portfolio and uh, the results were also very good. I was up almost 10% on the US market, 3% for the Canadian one. Um, I decided to invest uh, half of my money on the US market and I'll discuss that uh, later in the, in the webinar. Um, and as of uh, last Friday, I just take a quick look up and my US portfolio is up 19% and my Canadian portfolio is up 14.5%. I'm not saying this to brag or to tell you that I'm a genius or that I've cracked the code of Wall Street. Definitely not. Actually, you, we probably have people here that had even probably even better return than mine. My goal and my point with that is 
even though you're investing in a high time market, you still you you can still be making money later on because we never know when it's going to drop. We never know when it's going to stop. And I rather stay invested and be invested and then happy to be up almost 20% right now. Then looking at the market and still wondering, oh, damn, I missed the last part. I missed that, that small correction to enter the market. And now I have to wait for another one. So now that I've established that uh, timing the market is not what matters in portfolio management, I'm going to discuss what really matters. The first point, quite boring, seems quite obvious, but it's asset allocation. When you, uh, and I'm using this example because uh, what happens is that if you speak with people uh, around you, you're going to hear a lot of horror stories about uh, the market. And most of them, when you ask them what they did, you're gonna find out that they were highly concentrated in a specific stock or in a specific sector. So if you were all optimist and all hyped about the techno stocks back in the 1999 and the 2000, well, you probably lost a lot of money if you had 40 or 50% of your portfolio invested in techno stocks. Same thing happened for Canadian uh, as there was the, uh, the, huge boom, the, the huge boom on the oil sand market uh, in early 2000s. I know a lot of people, they were quite happy about all those income trusts making tons of money. And then when it crashed, they were all left with barely nothing, getting all those, those stocks, getting their dividend cuts, price were going down. Uh, and I'm not saying that oil sand companies are not good investment. I'm just saying that if you don't, if you put like 30, 40, 50, 60% of your portfolio into one, uh, <clears throat> into one sector, you're highly at risk. I know a lot of Canadians that they have like five or six Canadian banks, uh, two, three telecom like Telus, Bell, Rogers, and then uh, they have a few uh, energy companies. And because they have a portfolio yield of probably around four or five percent, uh, they have been doing well for the past couple of years as well. Uh, a lot of people will tell, well, you know what? I have a super solid portfolio. Canadian banks are the best bank in the world, which actually I believe. But you know what? Tomorrow morning we can wake up, the housing market could crash, which I'm still afraid that it's going to, going to happen in Canada. And then we have Canadian banks, no matter how strong they tell you they are, remember they're bankers. They're never going to tell you it's the difficult time, right? So they might be struggling with the mortgage market at one point in time, especially with, uh, with, with, with cities like Calgary and Moncton, Vancouver and, and, and Toronto. So it's very important to have something that is highly diversified. The second thing is your investment strategy. Then again, it sounds quite obvious, but I would be curious to know how many people take the time to write down their investment thesis and their investment mission uh, to know exactly what they want, why they invest, what they're looking for in terms of companies. Uh, those are steps that we tend to forget as we gain experience on the stock market. But I would suggest that you revise your investment goal each year um, because at one point in time, you're going to be lost. And this is one of the factors that will create the fact that you're struggling with buying or selling. If you are unsure about your investment strategy, if you're not quite sure, like, which kind of companies you're looking at, then you don't know which kind of company you want to buy and which kind of company in your portfolio that doesn't belong there anymore. So it's very important to keep that in mind, write down your investment strategy somewhere and then keep reminding yourself. Finally, if market timing isn't an issue when you do uh, investment, time in the, in the market is. A lot of people, if you're 65 or 70, might tell me, well, Mike, I'm retired. Uh, I'm already withdrawing part of my money, either just for dividend or selling a few stocks each year to uh, support my lifestyle. So I don't have a long uh, investment horizon in front of me. And I think this is where you are wrong. Even if you're 70 ch today, chances are that you're going to live up to 85, maybe even 90. And then think about your spouse, think about your grandchildren. Uh, chances are that your, your portfolio is going to survive you. You're going to leave money for those people. So then you still have a long run to go. So pretty much no matter how old you are, 
you have you should be investing for the long term and mind you if you think that you're going to be out of the market within the next four or five years i don't think it's a good idea to be in, in the market period the point of investing is to go into many economic cycle many stock market cycle meaning that you're going to live a lot of bull market but also a lot of correction or bear markets so within five years it's too short chances are that you're going to be left out during the middle of a bear market so you might as well start looking for bonds or cds or safer investment but gradually get out of the the equity market before we start with the four steps I've used to build my own portfolio, I want to discuss a little bit about currency impact. I receive lots of emails, lots of questions about it. Uh, either you're American and you're wondering if you should buy Canadian banks, for example, or telecoms, because by the way, I think that TELUS, Bell and Rogers are a lot better investment than AT&T and, and, and Verizon, in my opinion, even though dividend yield wise, uh, those two uh, giants are, are much better. Uh, I don't think they have lots of growth right now and they're busy uh, spending all their cash on their infrastructure while there's still plenty of growth to, to be there on the Canadian market. So regardless if you're an American trying to invest in the Canadian market or on the other side, you're Canadian like me and you're wondering, is it worth it to get 70 cents or 65 cents or 75 cents a, a dollar when I invest in, in US stocks? What I showed you here is a graph starting, uh, I. From what I can remember, it was like the, the largest graph I could pull out on the white chart about the currency impact. But just to show you that over 30 years, there was no currency impact. And I'm not saying that it's going to happen in the next 30 years. Actually, it's just happened that I was quite lucky pulling out that chart. But the point is the maximum that went up or that went down was about 30%. So technically, if you are the unluckiest investor on earth, you are going to invest today. And then this, the Canadian dollar is going to boom by 30, 35% across the next 20, 25 years. That would be the, the worst case scenario for your US stocks as you would lose money once you convert it back. Well, when you think about it, what is 25 or 30% over 20, 25, 30 years? It's nothing. It's not even the inflation when you do it on an annualized basis. And this is the key here. If you had a chance to invest in Microsoft or Starbucks or 3M, for example, I mean, just pull out the charts over the past 30 years for those companies, and you're going to see that they're showing triple even four uh, numbers, uh, four digits return. So we're talking about hundreds and thousands of percents of returns in exchange of a small loss of maybe 20, 25, 30% at the end of the, of the run. So for that reason, I don't really consider currency when I trade. I actually look forward to get the best asset allocation possible. And this is one of the reasons why I think it's important for Canadian to invest in the US market because we don't have companies like 3M, we don't have companies like Microsoft. Um, Companies that are be, do, do dealing business across the world like Coca-Cola or Procter & Gamble or Colgate Family, for example, those are companies that are not available for us. We need to switch our money to the US market if we want to have this kind of asset allocation and benefit from international market as well. So this is why I think it's very important. And in the end, as you can see, there's no impact there. So the, uh, for the, uh, the second part of the webinar, I'm going through step by step. I have like four things that I've used to get outside of the, oh, I wonder if it's the right time to buy, to I'm investing $100,000 within two months, building my portfolio very quickly. Um, I'm going to use my... Uh, Thanks, Ken. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, I'm going to show you how I've used DSR, which is my own service. So when I created the, the service back in 2013, it was to help people making good investment decision, trying to synthesize and, 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 and make information easy to understand so they can save time and make wise investment decision. So I thought when I receive my own money, well, you know what? I would rather put my money where my mouth is and I'm gonna use my own services 
with my own service uh, services and then start investing my my uh, my money so the first step seems quite obvious make a list make yourself a buy list don't start investing yet but just pretend that you're going to uh, the purpose of making a list now is quite uh it's quite simple imagine what happened when uh you <clears throat> sorry what happened back in January when we had that small correction? I know that we all have busy lives. So you had to have a very demanding job. Uh, you have kids to take care of or you retired and then you have to plan your next tea time, uh, tea golf time, I mean, or your next vacation in Vietnam. So the point here is to make sure that you are ready when the market correction happens. So if you're really working for that trigger, because what happened is you live your busy life, and at one point, you're just like, oh, I hear that the market is going down. Maybe it would be the right time to invest, but I don't know which stock to buy. So what I'm going to do? Oh, I know. Next Sunday, I'm going to take the day off, do some research, pull out some, uh, some graphs and make my list. So on Monday morning, I'll be busy. I'll be, I'll be ready to, to invest. Unfortunately, some things come up over the weekend, you forget about it, and then two weeks later, you pull out your screen again on the market, and then you realize the small correction is gone, it's not time to invest in the market, or so you think, because you were not ready. So the first, time, the first thing is, make yourself ready, draw that list. I'm going to share my screen now to show you how I did that. So I know it's a little bit blurry. So this is my website, Dividend Stocks Rocks. We do have portfolio models for US investors and Canadian investors. As you can see, we have portfolios for small investors that start with under $10,000 with like four or five stocks to be included in their portfolio. And we go up to 500K portfolio. In my case, I selected the 100K uh, dividend growth. The uh, the reason why it's quite obvious, it really fits my own portfolio, my own situation. We do have booklets over there and I'm going to go there in a second, but what is good is that you already have the, the list in Excel right now. You can download it. You have the dividend yield, the payout, earning revenue and dividend growth over the past five years and then upside downside potential. I'll get back to the valuation part later on in this webinar, but just to show you how it looks like, so you can download that and have your list ready already in, in a second. When you click on the booklet, you get this uh, 20 pages PDF document where you have asset allocation over here. As you can see, and I'm gonna increase my screen, just bear a second with me. Oh, there we go. So when I was talking about the importance of having a good asset allocation. This is what I'm talking about. As you can see, I really like techno stocks right now. I think that they're going to boom. Uh, they show solid numbers, but I restrain myself to invest only 20% of my portfolio in, into them for obvious reason. Then after that, what is nice is that you get, I'm going to go back to the full page. You get the comments on a quarterly basis. We review all those portfolio on a quarterly basis, making uh, buy uh, and sell as well, making trades. And you have like updated comments on what's happening on the stock market for those companies. And then you have the trades and the explanation over there. And finally, I got a ranking that uh, I'm going to talk about later on. Going back to my screen over here, just bear with me a second. All right. Yes, thanks, Vey. We uh, we actually update. We're uh, in the middle of, as the earnings season is uh, is over now. We're almost over. We're updating all our booklets uh, and and making our trades on that. So that was the first step: making your list, making sure that you were ready. And then the second step is to write down your investment thesis for each company. The point here is to make sure that you don't doubt yourself anymore. So in order to do that, it's fun to have a list of names. You can have like 10, 15, 20, even 50 stocks that could be interesting in your portfolio. But if you don't do your own research and if you don't write down all the reason why you should invest your money into those companies, 
chances are you're going to still doubt yourself. So the point of writing down your investment thesis is to convince yourself that you're going to make money when you invest it. So we're all afraid, for example, of investing in Canadian National Railway. Uh, the stock has been uh, going down slightly over the, uh, the past two months. Uh, now it's trading around $95, I remember mainly because uh, the company is amazing, it's going well, but they face some, I call it traffic problem. They had delays and they had like congestion on their railroads, uh, which occurred several delays for, uh, for, uh, for manufacturers and, and their clients. So a lot of people were concerned about that. So then we're all, the, the thing is that we are concerned that if we put our money at 95 bucks a share, in three months later, problems gonna get worse, market is going to crash, and then our shares are going to go down to 60 or $65. We don't want that. Obviously, when I started to invest my $100,000, I didn't want to see $65,000 by the end of December on my portfolio. Uh, Actually, Ross, uh, Hunter Harrison is not going to go back anywhere. He passed away in December. Did you know that? He, uh, he was re yeah, he was recently appointed as the CEO. Actually, it was, I think, on February or March last year, 2017, for CSX. He started his job over there, and then he, uh, he passed away. So... Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, that's the, oh really? <laughs> I didn't know that they had the same issue on, on the CSX about that. But yeah, yeah, he unfortunately passed away, but he did a great job with, uh, with Canadian Pacific and then Canadian National Railway as well. <laughs> so then again, the reason of writing down your investment thesis is to convince yourself. Uh, in order to help you so, what we do at Dividend Stocks Rock is that we have those stock cards uh, those have been created as, uh, I don't know if you remember, I, I used to, when I used to be a kid, uh, I love to collect hockey cards. So basically what I, I enjoyed about that is that with a simple, uh, like within seconds, you had a clear view of what's going on with the player, his stats, his strengths, his weaknesses, you know what it looks like. So you get a pretty good feel of, um, what's going to happen for his next year. So it's also a good, a good uh, way to help you build your, uh, um, <clears throat> your, your, uh, your team if you're, uh, if you're playing uh, fantasy hockey or fantasy football. So we try to do the same thing with, uh, with stocks here. So we have our business model. I'm going to pull it out over here right now. So business model, it's very important to understand the, the, how the company is making money. If you don't understand that, chances are you're going to get surprised when the stock market goes up or go down. And this will, again, it will trigger uh, 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 incertitude. It will trigger the fact that you're going to be hesitating. Should I sell the stock because it's going down or it's going, hop, it's going too hot? So understand the business model and then get your investment thesis. In your investment thesis, you should have uh, all the good reasons why you invest, the growth vectors, uh, the uh, the leadership position of the company, and on the second uh, on the second page, what we're going to have here is basically the it's like the uh, the picture of the hockey player. You have earnings, revenue, and dividend graph over here. You have basic information about what's happening about the metrics. Very important to assess potential risk. And as I'm going towards valuation in a, in a moment, uh, I think TELUS is a good example to talk about valuation. Imagine if Verizon enters the, mar the Canadian market uh, in five years from now or in 10 years from now. How would it affect the value of TELUS today? And the problem is you don't know if it's going to happen or not. And TELUS or Bell will be a completely different company with a completely different value if Verizon or AT&T or any big name comes into their playground and start to bully the, uh, the wireless market. And this is the whole point. So it's important to assess risk in your investment thesis. Know if you're uh, able to live with what's going to happen next. And then obviously I'm a dividend growth investor. So dividend growth perspective, 
you want to know exactly what to expect. Um, I like to have a good idea of, uh, of what I'm going to receive as a payout year after year. I'm always looking at companies that will grow their, uh, their payments um, from one year to another. Uh, I prefer to have lower yield but stronger dividend growth as well. Obviously, I'm in my mid-30s, so you're going to tell me, well, Mike, you probably have like 45 years in front of you uh, to invest. But then again, even if you have 15 or 20 years, uh, dividend growth is really important. Sorry, I wish I could have this uh, thing going back right there. <laughs> um, Sorry about that. Third step, then again, very obvious, but very difficult to do. Start big, start small, but start. The point here is to change your mind step from a waiting mode to action mode. So I don't expect everybody to receive like $100,000 like I did and invest pretty much 80% of it within two months. And I completed my portfolio uh, with the last trade at the very beginning of January, I had about like five or se uh, about like 7% in cash at that time and finished my portfolio. But the bulk of the portfolio was built within two months. I don't expect that, but please, if you have money on the side, start take five or 10% of your money, of your cash money and invest in it. Like just buy one stock. But this will put the mo will put you in motion, and then it's going to be easier to make a second buy and a third one. So just start small if you're not. And I, I can understand right now. We look at the market, and we all have those big concerns. We have Trump that is playing hardballs with Canada and the NAFTA, and then with steel as well. So we we have like bunch of like uncertainties around this. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen with the mortgage market as a uh, Canadian household is highly over uh, uh, deep in debt. But then again, if you don't invest, your money is sitting on the sideline, you're missing out on dividend payment. And most of it, you're letting, uh, you're, you're missing out on, on, <clears throat> on, invest, on, sorry, on profits as well. As I showed you within five, six months, I received over a thousand dollar in dividend payment from my pension plan and my, my pension portfolio, and I made almost 20% return. I would have lost this money if I haven't decided to invest already. So in order to help you out, we do have our ranking, which I'm going to show you here, and I'm going to discuss a little bit more about valuation. So each booklet has its own ranking, just in order like this. So this doesn't tell you much. So I'm going to show you how the ranking is done on the website. On the website, we have the rock solid ranking. Basically, what we do is that we have we use the DDM, which is the dividend discount model. Uh, I'm going to just go with the Canadian stock so you can see a few of them here. So dividend discount model. The reason why we use this valuation model on top of another one is mostly because we like to see companies as money printing machine. So we want to know how much should we pay for this kind of money making machine. Uh, the DDM is exactly based on that. So basically you put your invest, your expected investment return, the discount rate, and also we use a double stage dividend growth system. So we use a first dividend growth rate for the first 10 years. So this is closer to what's happening right now for the company. And then as a terminal rate, so the rates going forward after the 10 years, we use a more conservative approach, a smaller number to make sure that recession are good. Then again, this is just a starting point. And this is just, and as you can see, this is a very good example, Andrew Peller right here. I'm going to discuss the whole company in a moment because it's part of my favorite companies. And funny enough, it has an upside potential of minus 38%. It is rated here in terms of valuation as a sell. So you're going to say, Mike, what's the matter? You're telling me that you like Andrew Peller and then you're telling me that the ranking rated as a sell? That doesn't make any sense, right? But the thing is, valuation is just a small portion of the uh, of the overall investment and 
when you look here at the graph, you will see that the company is booming right now. It is growing in terms of revenue, it is growing in terms of earnings, and it's growing in terms of dividend. Uh, I will discuss the company later on, but in my opinion, the investment thesis is a lot more important than the uh, the investment thesis is a lot more important than the valuation method. I hosted a webinar about valuation a few weeks ago. I don't know if a few of you were uh, participating. And what happened in that uh, in that webinar is that I was showing that even the big guys like from Goldman Sachs, for example, that they had like millions of dollars invested in their portfolio managers, in their CFAs, in their analysts. Those guys, they pick up the phone, they get the call to the CEO and ask their own questions. They get their own answers. They golf with them, basically. They have all the information in the world. And what I've proven is that back in 2014, I pull out a list of what, they, uh, what they've made as like the top 40 most overvalued stocks. And they were wrong 69% of the time, meaning that from 2004 going forward for 12 months and then looking up in 2017 results, all those companies has gained in value. So if a bunch of guys which incredible experience and unlimited resources cannot tell you what is the right value of a stock. How can myself or yourself can, you, can have a good idea of what is a good valuation? I have a quick example here uh, just to tell you, uh, I bought shares of Microsoft, uh, <clears throat> sorry, back in September, October, I don't remember. Shares were just before the earnings goes out, it was around trading around $75. A lot of investors were saying, uh, Mike, you should wait. You should wait until the next correction. Uh, Microsoft is going to hit 60 bucks or even if you're lucky, 55 bucks in no time. Right now, it's it's not more than fully priced. It's overpriced at 75. Well, guess what? Now it's at $95. And those waiters, those people that keep on waiting and for that correction, will most likely never get their ends on those Microsoft shares at 55 bucks. Or maybe they will, but right now, the trade is almost, a tra the, the, the stock is almost trading at 100 bucks. So for it to get to 60 or 60 or 55, it has to drop about 40% or 35%. So then you need to hope for another catastrophe. We're not talking about the bear market here. So keep in mind, we always refer to 2008 but 2008 was the worst market crash in history since the Great Depression. And it was even worse than the Great Depression back in 1929, mostly because it was a lot faster. It happened overnight, over like six months, and this was very bad. So if you think that an event that happened only once in 75 years will happen again in the next 10, well, chances are that you're wrong. So for that reason, it's important to get the valuation as an idea. Obviously, most time you're going to feel more comfortable to, uh, to buy a stock that seems fairly priced or underpriced. But if your investment thesis is strong enough, you should go back and then make, uh, and, and make your purchase anyway. So last one is Focus on dividend growth. You know why? Because if you hold, and I'm going to get back my uh, my example of Enbridge. Uh, I bought shares of Enbridge uh, back in December, I think, when I was building my portfolio. It was November or December, it doesn't really matter. Right now it shows a negative return of probably like minus 15% in my portfolio. I don't mind because in the meantime, my payout just increased by 10%. I know it doesn't compensate for the fact that I'm losing money right now. It's paper money, but I'm losing it still. But keep in mind that when your uh, your portfolio your portfolio is generating higher and higher payouts, then you're just making money. And as long as you not sell, you're not losing money. So focus on dividend growth. Uh, <clears throat> this is also, in in my opinion, the most important metric as well. Mostly because. 
uh, the the uh, the importance of dividend growth is when a company keeps increasing its payout year after year. What happens after five or ten years is because it shows confident in the business model. Revenues and profits should be increasing because if not, you're not able to sustain that dividend growth. So it makes those kind of company very appealing, and those are company that you want to keep forever. Um, I know that there's a discussion on the drip, but I've missed it. So if there's any question about it in the chat box, uh, just use the question at the end, uh, just the, the question section, uh, and I'll an answer it at the end of the uh, at the end of the webinar. I just I want to make sure that I don't lose my focus over here. So, oh yeah, sorry, I wanted to finish with that. Uh, in order to help you out and 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 get. Uh, good uh, good idea of, uh, of timely buys. We have a weekly uh, DSR newsletter. So basically, and that's a good example. When I built my portfolio, they were built back in 2013. We've made modification, but from time to time, you have opportunities that come up and it will not be reflected in those portfolios because if they're good and my investment thesis are good for all of them, my, on my side, as long as the company meets my, my, my growth vector that I, and the reasons why I decided to purchase it, I'm never going to sell. So at that time, if I'm not going to sell and there's, I find another opportunity, I will put it in the newsletter. Good example of that was Enbridge, actually, that I decided to invest, which were not part of my portfolio. I mentioned it in the newsletter. Uh, then another one was uh, UPS on the, the U.S. stock market. Uh, it was identified in our booklet. Each year, we uh, we select 20 U.S. stocks and 10 Canadian ones to be the best stocks of 2018 or the year. For example, uh, it was part of that book that all my members received back in November, uh, late November, beginning of December, to prepare their year. So. The, the weekly newsletter is there to give you uh, more timely news and then better buy and sell uh, opportunities. Now for the uh, last part of the presentation, I would like to talk about three companies that I really like right now. They're not necessarily undervalued, but just to show you, National Bank, um, smallest of the big six, uh, most people just talk about the big five, but National Bank is a very strong bank as well. One of the reasons why I prefer this one over the others, and I'm not saying the others are bad, but just that right now, this is one of my favorite. It's because uh, it's highly concentrated in Quebec. And for that, the housing market in Quebec is not overeating right now. So if there's a the housing crash, it's not going to happen in Montreal or in Quebec City. So National Bank will be less affected. At the same time, they have uh, two important growth vector. First one is wealth management. Disclaimer, I used to work for private banking 1859, so I know what I'm talking about. Um, they are now the fourth largest asset manager in wealth management uh, in Canada. So very solid uh, proposition over there, very solid service. They're growing quarter after quarter. The second part is um, the capital market. They have invested a lot of money uh, in being performant in their uh, in their capital market. It's more, it, it creates uh, uh, volatile revenues and earnings, but it's a highly profitable place. So then again, a very good one here. Um, just to, to let you know, National Bank was the first bank to increase its dividend after a 2008 crash. They has uh, they had increased their dividend twice last year for seven percent. Uh, dividend growth. So definitely a keeper uh, in my opinion. Second one is Andrew Peller. As I mentioned, funny enough, because it shows that it's clearly overvalued right now, according to the DDM. Um, one of the flaw of the dividend discount model is that with with stocks that pays lower dividend yield, like Andrew Peller is, is in, in around 1%, it's harder to get a real value. When I bought it, it was already overvalued by I think like five or ten percent, or fairly valued. And now my porf in my portfolio, this this stock is up like by fifty percent. If you look at the chart, the price chart for Andrew Peller, it's going nuts. Uh, they are the largest wine maker in Canada. They own about ninety percent of of uh, the market shares. They grow through acquisition, and as the Canadian economy is healthy right now. We're going to have a lot of people drinking wine as well because it's a luxury product. 
So then again, lots of growth vector over there. They have increased 10% uh, by 10% their dividend last year. So another one that is a keeper. They're very well safe, small competition over there. And uh, they, uh, they benefit from a good partnership with the liquor store as well. The last one is Magna International. Uh, during their latest quarterly report, uh, they were showing um, uh, almost no sales growth in North America. They are one of the largest uh, auto part um, supplier. So they're obviously dealing a lot with the big three in Detroit, but they have also plans in, uh, in, uh, in Europe and in Asia. So during their latest quarter, they show good revenue growth, mostly coming from Europe. It was double digit coming from there. They had a new platform for the uh, BMW uh, i5 series. So they are doing a very good job over there. What is what I like about Magna as well is that automakers don't like to deal with small suppliers. They want to make sure that all parts will come uh, in time and that their manufacturer are reliable. So Magna is working very close to all of them to upgrade their products coming with all the time new products as well. And as they are very a uh, large company, uh, a lot of automakers will prefer to do to deal with Magna instead of the others. Uh, latest dividend growth increase for this one was up by 20%. So I know you're going to tell me, Mike, this, those are like smaller yield uh, yielding stocks. But when you look at double digit dividend growth, uh, this often comes also with strong stock price appreciation potential. So when you combine both of them and you send those stocks 10, 15 years in the future, you know that you're going to make a lot of money out of them. So those were my uh, three favorite picks. If you want to have more information about those, I would suggest you to go to click on the offer that I'm going to open right now. Uh, just bear with me a second. I'm not too good with my screen right now. There you go. So go at the bottom of your screen. Uh, you'll have an offer for our uh, DSR membership. You had the opportunity to see a little bit more how it, it's uh, working and how we do it. Um, I know it's frustrated for, frustrating for Canadian people to, uh, to, to spend money in US dollars. So the regular DSR membership is at $177 for a year us dollar i'm offering it to you today at 97 dollars in canadian money if you're an american investor and you rather pay in us dollar i also had the same offer 97 dollar us per year uh this gives you access to all portfolios no matter if you're canadian or us so you get access to our newsletter which is uh, the content is half of it is canadian the other half is us as well all the portfolio booklets all the stock cards, we have over 100 stock cards like this. If you click on the button, you don't have to register for the offer and you will be able to receive the three stock cards of companies I talked about it today. So National Bank, Andrew Peller and Magna International, you can download them for free. So just go there and get them. Um, also, uh, you'll get the 2018 Best Dividend Stock Book. Uh, I've been creating this, uh, this book since 2012 and my batting average on my prediction on that is 80%. So I'm a lot better than the Goldman Sachs people, uh, meaning that the, uh, the overall portfolio I'm building for that year is beating the market by 80% uh, of the time. My goal with DSR is to help you making money, help you to make sound decision and so you can save time and get rid of that buy and sell struggle. So I'm doing all the hard work for you. But if it doesn't fit your strategy, we offer a 60 day money back guarantee. So you can go on the site, try it up, receive our newsletter, download everything you want, all the stock cards and the reports. And then if after a month or 40, 45 days, it's not fit for your strategy or you, you don't have the time to use it or whatever, you just send us a quick email and within 48 hours, we're going to cancel your, your, uh, your subscription and apply a full refund on your business card, which happened to be like five, 10 business days a week, but no question asked, nothing. So it, it, it's worth a try. Uh, we are currently working on a new service actually uh, called DSR Pro. That will be quite amazing. We had a beta group right now of 35 people. Basically what we'll be offering in DSR Pro is that we are going to 
do a custom my custom report following quarter after quarter all the quarterly reports that you have in your portfolio so you're sending us your li your list of stocks up to 40 stocks we're going to track them and at the end of the earnings season you're going to receive your report with just the stock that you have in your portfolio so if you want to take a look just click on the offer button go take a while if you have any questions you can also send me uh, emails as well or uh or you can uh, ask them in the question section. Now I'm going to flip the screen right like this. And I'm going to start answering the questions. Uh, I see a few question marks on the chat box. Please use the questions uh, section so I don't have to switch from one screen to another. It's a lot easier for me to do it that way. So I'm going to start with Kent Wilson asking, I'm in Canada and I want to get into some cryptocurrencies. Can you recommend a good brokerage? Uh, unfortunately, Kent, I cannot recommend you one because I'm not a big fan of cryptocurrency as a mean of investment. I'm just going to make a, a, a small parenthesis about that. But the, the overall reason why, and I'm not discussing the, the blockchain technology here. I think it's, it's a rev revolutionary technology over there. Um, a lot of uh, financial institutions are looking at how they're going to use it. So definitely it's there to stay. But investing in Bitcoins on, or Litecoins or Ethereum is just as investing in, in gold or in the oil barrel, but just with more fluctuation. Meaning that if you, if you have a virtual shelf and you would put your Litecoins on the shelf and wait 10 years from now, it's not going to create any value. So price may go up, price may go down, but it's not value. It's not creating something. It's not a, a business. There's no revenue. There's no value coming out of cryptocurrencies. It's just fluctuation. It's just gamble. So for that reason, I'm out for <laughs> so for that. Uh, Mike, you're saying Enbridge is a buy at six percent yield. I, I think so too. I'm actually not worried at all about Enbridge. Uh, Honestly, the overall pipe, I mean, you have pipelines, MLPs, REITs, and utilities right now that are getting a good beat up on the stock market. Pretty much for all the same reason, interest rates are rising. People are pulling out their money off from those high yielding stocks going back to bonds. Uh, we are scared that the next product, the, the next project, like for the pipelines, for example, for Enbridge, uh, this is a highly capital intensive business. So obviously a lot of people are afraid that interest rate are going to affect their, uh, their perspective over the long haul. I don't think it's gonna have a major impact on the short term though, and I think that uh, Enbridge just uh, completed their their, uh, their financial structure back in fall. They have announced a 10% dividend increase uh, for the next three years. They have actually met their promises for 2018 already. So as long as the dividend is safe in this situation, I am not worried at all. Hello, Richard. Uh, no, I haven't. Actually, to be honest, I've been, uh, you're asking about uh, CHE.UN and IPL. Uh, the reason why I haven't uh, made any research on that is because I was uh, focusing on the uh, U.S. earnings. Um, this week, I'm starting the Canadian earnings and then going forward in the next two weeks, I'm going to follow them and go a little bit back in time uh, in February and March to get all the information. So I will be reviewing them actually. Uh, those are part of my uh, DSR Pro request, actually. So I will uh, do a full review on them shortly. I didn't forget about Algon Can Power either. So those are on my uh, to-do list. Sorry about that. Uh, Leslie, you're asking about the cryptocurrency, uh, Michael. I think I've already answered. If if there's anything missing to my uh, to my answer from uh, from the first question from Kent, just let me know. Just post another question. But then again, um, I rather invest in sound dividend growth paying stocks that I know I can understand how they make money. Uh, because you know, there's a lot of people that were. Uh, I, I wrote an article on the Dividend Guy blog 
about six or seven months ago during summertime, I think last year. Uh, and I was saying, uh, and I was explaining why I decided to not look into cryptocurrencies for the reason I've stated. And some readers were saying, well, it might, you don't understand what is the cryptocurrency. And I do understand the technology behind it. I did lots of research, but still then again it doesn't create any value if you buy an ounce of gold and you put it on your desk today and you wait for the next 20 years and then you go back to your desk what are you going to find there an ounce of gold it's going to worth more maybe maybe less we don't even know but it's not going to generate anything so for that reason there's nothing there, there's nothing to be done uh, on that side Oh, V, yeah, that was the discussion going about, about the drip, yeah. So my thoughts on the drip. I think that if you reach a point where you're, the size of your portfolio is good for you and that you don't intend to invest much money into new stocks later on, dripping is a very good uh, very good way to keep building and profiting from, capital, uh, from, uh, from capitalizing your uh, your uh, your your dividend the thing is you can get free shares uh because they're being bought automatically without any transaction fees so this is definitely something that i'm even going to look out for my pension plan uh now I'm, i've been busy a lot with uh, dealing with my businesses these days but uh soon enough one of my goal is to actually since i cannot put more money because it's a lira account it's a locked in account I cannot put more money in my pension plan. So I'm going to drip a lot of them. Uh, I'm going to drip a lot of my stocks over there. It's a very good way to increase your position. Uh, sometimes, from time to time, it's also good to leave some companies paying you the dividend in cash and then use it for rebalancement. Uh, especially when what I do is that uh, each quarter I, I review all my port all my my holdings and then if one company doesn't meet my investment thesis anymore this is my sell signal uh i, I know i i've talked a lot about buying struggle today but for the sell part when uh a company doesn't meet my investment thesis i sell when a company cuts its dividend i sell Usually, I sell before they cut the dividend, but I mean, from time to time, surprises can happen. Uh, so, but this is definitely those moments where I, I'm going to sell. And if uh, I have a few bucks on the side coming from other dividends, I can use this money to rebalance the rest of my portfolio. So, depending on where you're at, I think there's no wrong decision besides using your dividend to rebalance or buy new stocks or dripping. Both are good strategies. Mark, you're asking, how do we get the three, uh, the three uh, stock cards that I've presented? Uh, just uh, select the offer button and then go on the uh, click on I want to join DSR and you will get and I'm going to put them. I'm going to put the link right here in the chat box. You don't have to join DSR to get those link to get those cards on that card. I do have, uh, you do, you will be able to just click on them. They're PDF downloadable, very easy. So you're going to get them. Uh, and you're asking, can we update the dividend stock list DSR Pro as a quarter pass? Um, that could be interesting. Um, so far, the DSR Pro is, uh, the way that we design it is, Obviously, it's a quarterly product, but you receive it. You have to pay for a full year. Uh, the, the reason behind that is that it takes a lot of manpower to pull out those reports. Just to give you an example, for 35 members, we have to follow 400 stocks. So we want to make sure that we price it uh, in, a, in an affordable way uh, that is quite cheap, actually, right now. it's uh, And even we're going to have... Uh, a small launch for DSR members only because we want to grow this one very uh, slowly. So we had first the beta tester for 35 people. Actually, I, it was supposed to be 20, but then uh, I received so many requests that I have accepted 35 people. And then we're going to have a launch for DSR members only uh, for the next quarter. So it, sometimes in the, towards the end of April, beginning of May. And then we're going to have an official lunch, which will be, which will cost obviously uh, a little bit more. But yeah, we wanted to price it 
at, at a reasonable price, so it's affordable for most investors. So for that reason, right now it's a yearly uh, that will be a yearly pass and not quarterly. I'm not saying it's not going to happen in the future, but want to make sure that uh, everybody's winning there. So I'm winning because we have to hire people to follow those those stocks, and at the same time, I don't want to get it too expensive for uh, for people. Randall, you're asking, do you use options in your strategy? Uh, I don't, but this is uh, this year. Uh, this is something I want to look into. I've done some research already about uh, how to write covered calls and earn uh, money in the meantime on the, the stocks that I own in my portfolio. So this is definitely something that I'm going to look into it. Uh, I My first job uh, at, uh, at, uh, at the financial firm was actually to do back office in the trading and uh, options and, fu uh, sorry, <clears throat> options trading and futures. So I know it works, but now to use it as a strategy in my own stuff, I'm doing uh, more research on that. And I'll definitely come up with a series on the Dividend Guy blog to explain uh, my research on that. So thank you for asking, but I'm not there yet. Uh, Arb, do you provide tips or an advice on what account RSP or TFSA to build your account in? Um, I've actually discussed, uh, I've actually had a webinar about RSP investing about two weeks ago. Uh, just to give you like something short in, in two minutes, uh, for RSPs, uh, obviously the difference between RSP and TFSA over the next 25 years, it's, it's, it's nothing in terms of like which contribution makes what in the account. When you just do the math, what's going to have an influence is your tax rate now and your tax rate at retirement. For example, if right now you're making, I don't know, $100,000 a year and you have a pension plan at work, uh, you have a high tax mar marginal tax rate now, so it's a good thing to invest in your RSPs. But the problem is that if you build your RSP on top of your pension, when you withdraw your money, chances are you're not going to save much taxes when you withdraw it at the age of 65. If you receive a pension of like forty or fifty thousand dollar plus Canadian pensions, and then plus you get uh, RSP withdrawals, chances are that you're you're going to pay almost as much taxes as you saved when you contribute. So in the in this case, TFSA is a little bit better. Um, I would put obviously my U.S. stocks in our RSPs. Uh, this is because they are not taxable. In, T, in the TFSA, if you fill out the form properly, you're going to get a 15% tax withholding tax from your U.S. dividend. So then again, not the best idea to invest your money in the, to a, uh, your U.S. stocks in a TFSA. You're better off with the RSP. Um, besides that, uh, if you're looking for capital gains on both sides, it's not taxable, so it's not the end of the world. Uh, if you have like if you have over a hundred thousand dollar to invest, my my uh, suggestion would be to meet up with a fee-based financial planner that will be able to to walk you through the difference between having a cash account, an RRSP, and a TFSA. The advantage of a fee-based financial planner is that he should not uh, try to sell you anything. He's just going to get paid per hour and per work. So he's going to write down a whole retirement plan for you and he's going to answer all your questions in regards to investment. So you're going to get non-biased advice. Obviously, as I mentioned in my disclaimer, I'm not your financial advisor or your broker. So I'm now entitled to give you like personal advice. So I'm giving you ideas and guidelines, but then again, check out with a fee-based financial planner. I know it sucks to pay like a thousand or $2,000 for a meeting, but it's definitely worth it for a few, for your future. Uh, pause, man. You're asking what is the best way to monitor dividend returns for Canadian? Um, are you talking about the dividend payouts? Uh, just maybe use the chat box to to to, to clear out the the um... yes about pia uh, about payouts. Uh, honestly, it's not that simple. Uh, to my to the best of my knowledge, there's there isn't um, a website that is offering this. Actually, funny enough, but DSR Pro is doing that. Uh, we because we are tracking them manually. So basically, what we have is that we have a list of all the companies uh, with the estimated uh, earnings date, and then we pull out the the, the the press release and we give 
uh, our members for DSR Pro. Now, that is not DSR. As I mentioned, this project is launching. But what we do is that we tell them uh, what the CEO said about the company, uh, earnings, revenue, and dividend payouts different. So we're telling you if there's a cut or if there's an increase. So this is how we track it. We have to do it manually for, for a good part of it. And I also have a professional subscription at Y Charts, obviously for the company, because uh, it costs a few thousand dollars a year. But uh, I think it's like four or five thousand US do US thousand dollars a year to get access to that. But then you get all the data possible about dividend growth. But from the best of my knowledge, yeah, it is expensive. I mean, it's worth it for us because we have a business and I can still use it for my own personal good. But I would not suggest that for uh, for other people. Uh, Russ, you're suggesting fast graph. Is it tracking also Canadian uh, Canadian stocks? Yes, not just the one that are trading on the NYSE, but all of them. On the Canadian stock exchange, I mean. So that's a good thing to know. I, I've I've seen I've seen Fast Graph a lot, but I never uh, never tried it. So uh, thanks for the suggestion. Uh, Dave, you're asking if DSR has U.S. stock list or only Canadian. Actually, 50% uh, of the, uh, the the content is uh, on U.S. stocks and the other 50 is on Canadian. So when we, for example, once a month, we do a large uh, newsletter reviewing a full industry. So we're going to review four or five stock picks on the U.S. side and on the Canadian side as well. So you end up with 10, four, eight to 10 uh, stock picks a, a month that we review, always half Canadian, always half U.S. My own portfolio is, is half and half, or honestly, probably like 60% U.S. and 40% Canadian, but we track both market equally. So uh, this is how we do it. I think it's worth it for, for both sides, actually, even for American investors to invest in, uh, in Canadian. And uh, we, we have a strong energy sector, uh, telecom and banking as well. So I think it's worth it for, uh, for, both, uh, for both borders to invest on the other one. Uh, Peter, you asked about the drip. So I think I, I'll, I guess that I've answered your question on this one. Uh, Russ, not so much a question for Canadian. Uh, should, shouldn't we make sure everyone understands the importance of topping up their TFSA? <laughs> yes, definitely. Uh, it's kind of funny because I remember I was uh, a financial planner uh, back in 2008 when it was announced that in the, the following year we had the, uh, the TFSA. And a lot of my colleagues were unsure about opening those accounts for the for their clients and i kind of because it was only like for a five thousand dollar contribution but then now 10 years later we had a lot of people that has over a hundred thousand dollar invested in their tfsa so definitely use that i mean whenever especially in canada whenever the government is giving you a tax break on something use it and use it till the end don't be afraid of that uh this was small when it was like five or ten thousand dollar now it has become huge uh you can do it with your spouse as well so it's really worth it it's a great way to invest there are no restrictions whatsoever so you can invest in pretty much anything there's the like i mentioned 15 percent uh, withdrawal tax rate on this but still still worth it a shot uh, if you have maxed your uh, your rsp and, and for a lot of people, the TFSA makes more sense than the RSP uh, just because of the tax implication in the future. Ellen, you're saying if you drip in a non-registered account, is it not a nightmare at figure out your capital gain uh, if you sell the stock? Uh, yeah, um, this could be a nightmare. To be honest, uh, I love the financial market. I love numbers. But for accounting purposes, I have my accountant and I send all the paper to him and I don't mind paying, paying him to get uh, the things done. The idea here, I strongly believe to, uh, to pay people for things that you're not interested in doing or you're not that good in doing and to focus on what you know best and what you are strong. So I invest in my strengths. And definitely accounting is definitely not one of my passions. So I'll leave that to my accountant. Uh, 
Uh, Ron, you're saying does using Morningstar, Zach Investment, Value Spread, Tip Ranks, Fast Draft, Sure Dividend, etc. meet your definition of paralysis? Yeah, probably. Uh, we often say that too much information is like not enough information. And this is probably the case now that you have the possibility as an investor, as a DIY investor, to select uh, three, four, five, six uh very good investment services for probably less than a thousand or two thousand dollar a year so it's really worth it because you're saving on management fees but then you are stocked to receive like pages and pages and i'm talking probably like 20 or 30 pages a week of of data of stocks of information where in the end you're going to spend so much time or probably not at all because you will be under that burden that you're not going to do anything. And this is what I had in mind when I created DSR. And it's funny because sometimes people, it, they find it, it's not for them because I don't share enough information, meaning that we do maybe like a 10, 15 pages report on our side, uh, research to create a stock card that is only a two pager. But the point is, is right there, is to make your decision easy, is to point out where you, uh, you, must, um, you must go to get the last piece of information before you make the trade. So we try to keep things simple instead of overloading you with a bunch of information, because in the end, too much is like not enough. Um, aside from US and Canadian stock, do you analyze international stocks, Europe, Asia? Uh, I've been asked that from time to time, but we don't. Uh, the main reason is because information is sometimes hard to get. Uh, the, uh, the numbers, the accounting principles are not exactly the same. And honestly, I'd rather invest in 3M or, or, or Johnson & Johnson um, that are American companies with over 50% of their, uh, of their revenue coming outside offshore, so on the international market, than trying to go on another market. For me, it's a little bit like uh, Ron's question when you get like four or five, six investment services at the same time. If you're trying to, sh to chase three, four or five markets, I mean, we already had plenty of great buying opportunity on the US and Canadian market. I know there's a lot of places, uh, a lot of, of good investment on other markets, but I don't, I don't see how Unilever or Nestle is going to bring, or Diego, for example, will, uh, will bring more value to my portfolio than, than stocks that I could buy uh, on the US or Canadian market. Uh, yeah, Richard, I didn't forget about the St. Hubert lunchtime. Uh, definitely once I'm back from Guatemala, right now my life has been quite hectic because the first week of March, I spent it with my kids and my wife a, in a vacation probably in uh, Charlevoix. If you're looking for a nice place, nice landscape, time off, go there. The problem is uh, I didn't work that week and now I'm going for another week. So I'm pretty much lost right now. I have to work, but I'll get back to you for that for sure. Uh, Peter, you're asking me why Guatemala? And I think I'm going to end the webinar with that. Uh, Guatemala, I know it has a bad press in North America. I know it is pictures as a very dangerous country and it's actually rank maybe like top four in like uh, homicide per capita country in the world. So it doesn't give you a lot of an incentive to visit that place. But seriously, when you go in small villages, uh, people there are incredibly welcoming. They are warm. They want to get to know you and not to sell you stuff like, you know, tourism and, and capitalism as not it too much. Those villages, people are authentic. It's a magical place. One of my favorite places is Lake Atitlan, where we go. Uh, if you want to look at, um, I'm going to, like, you can rent an apartment over there. It's a Passage Cap, it's called. It's a friend guy named Pierre. He, uh, he owns a place right on the lake. It's amazing. Great, great view on the apartment. Uh, I love it, the, the weather there right now in, uh, in Lake Atitlan. It's like 27 degrees at day and 12 at night. It's sunny all summer. It's all, it's sunny, sunny sorry all day long, all year long, amazing place. You're two hours away from the, the beautiful, uh, no, Lake Atitlan. At
right, if I like this. <laughs> um, yeah, it is clean. Uh, you actually can see 15, 20 feet down when you're on the uh, on the pier. So uh, my my family, uh, we swam on it for two weeks every day. We jumped in the water every day, never had any problems. And it's fun because the, uh, the lake is like 16 kilometers square uh, and you have to get taxi boat from one place to another to visit the villages. Great hiking places over there. Uh, it is super cheap. Oh, Lana, it's nice. Uh, no, it's it's very cheap. Uh, you know what? You can easily have, uh, we had an amazing curry, my wife and I, with a, a glass of wine. Kids had, um, they had pollo. They had the, the sorry, fe, fe chicken uh, with juice and everything, and it cost under 40 bucks. So it's very cheap. Amazing place. Then again, it's just magical. Everything I like of this place. And if you're on to a bigger trip, go on Sitikal. Most amazing ruins you'll see ever in your life. It's like kilometers of ruins in the jungles. It's just a, a nice place. So then again, I think it's a good way to uh, close it. Uh, Lana, when is your daughter's going backpacking? Is, uh, is she around? Uh, send me an email. I'd like to meet her. That would be nice. Uh, sorry. Oh, the link doesn't work. Uh, oh, sorry. It's, yeah. It's Passage Cap. There you go. Now it's going to work. Sorry about that. So then again, thank you for being here. Sorry about the problems yesterday. I'm, I'm happy to see that this one went well. Hope you get some value on it. And if you want to be, if you're curious to see what more can I provide you with, jump on DSR, look at the offer. Uh, oh, I'm going to miss. Oh, she's coming home on April. So if she's around Lake Etiquan, let me know so we can... Uh, we, we can definitely meet. That would be fun. I can uh, tell her a few good places to go. Uh, so, yeah, then again, check out for a DSR membership. It's a great product. I put my heart and soul into that. This is the, uh, the like, you know, you, you're going to really have uh, the opportunity to, to subscribe to a, a service or a business where the owner is actually doing this just for passion. Yeah, I'm living out of it. But you know what? If you're not making money, if you're if it's not working out for you, well, then it's not working out for me. So my goal here is to establish a win-win situation that you're making money, I'm making money, everybody's happy. I can go to Guatemala and then work on my laptop while I'm, I'm sitting in my hammock and be happy as well. So thank you all for all for coming today, and uh, we'll have a new webinar soon. Cheers.